What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Outchopper channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans Likes Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. It goes a long way for me. It goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content goes live. You're a little neck of the YouTube woods. Don't know why I just screwed up my own intro that I do every single day on hundreds of thousands of videos. But you know what? Such is life. Roy McElroy did the same thing with two footers that he had made the entire tournament until the last three holes. He misses two of the last three. It's okay. I lost a lot of money because of it. Actually, I could have won a lot of money. I lost a little money, but it is what it is. Kind of the tail end of uh, last week. Not as good as the beginning of the first. We had run a couple of days there in a row. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thursday, Friday, a little bit by the wayside. But we continue on uh, feeling really good about today's card. Got a couple of props that we kind of got to keep our eye on. A couple of pitching situations. I mean, I feel like they could say that every single day. Uh, but specifically one in a great, great hitting environment. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about BetMGM, Odd Shopper, all the great stuff. Hopefully you had a great weekend, better than Rory. Even though he made a lot of money. But uh, again, money's not really a thing for him. It's legacy. And... I could have used the money. But anyway, producer Jacob, he's on hand. He's ready for Celtics game five on Monday. Don't forget to check out NBA Lindy's as well. And without further ado, nine games on the slate. Let's get to the picks. We start with Skeen Skeen Mother Trucker. Because why wouldn't we? Paul Skeen's everybody's favorite pitcher. We talk about him ad nauseum. That's a, just something to pay attention to. Uh, but we got this Spears fellow that we got to cover first. Carson Spears, very limited sample size, not great strikeout stuff. But so far, 247 expected batting average, 373 expected slugging. I don't really know what to make of him other than, well, you see the 6.92 ERA he had last season in a couple of starts, 4.30 expected ERA. So far, so good. 3.48 expected ERA in the exact same, yeah, like 291. 291 pitches in 2023, 290 in 2024. So we're we're looking at a guy who seems like he's okay, but at the same time, he's going up against Paul Skeens. I got to say, Pittsburgh, don't know what to make of them entirely facing a righty because they get out of Coors Field. You come back out of Coors Field, and now the ball's going to be moving a little bit more. Yes, because altitude up there at Coors for breaking stuff. Now you're going to see it a little bit differently. And I think that's the only thing that really has me staying away from betting them. Well, it's a heavy number, Paul Skeen. So I'm looking at uh, the run line, actually, but I hate the home run line idea against an offense that's as egregious as Pittsburgh. 25% K rate, only an 81 WRC plus against right-handed pitching. The second worst mark tied for the second worst mark with colorado never good when you're tied with colorado but paul Skeens, it's now already inflated the over of seven and a half has moved to minus 122 best available line at the moment pay close attention to it maybe you pick them people can just jump on that because paul Skeens feels like he's automatic for this number against the cincinnati lineup that just mows dude down you could just mow them down 26.4 percent k rate but I think I might be looking more at alternate numbers rather than the seven and a half here. If I'm really confident in it, Paul Skeens is going to have 10, 12 strikeouts in spots like this going forward. It, it's just going to be an inevitability, but it's a range of outcomes thing. I still think the left tail probably outweighs it. Mm, it's such a tough spot, but so I'm just going to make it a lean as a ball game and watch the numbers and see what the public does to these as the day goes on. You want to talk the most ridiculous prospective home run play that I'm thinking about? It's actually dose home run play that I'm thinking about here. Randy Vasquez going up against Christopher Sanchez. Let's talk about Sanchez first. We know the ground ball rate with Mr. Southpaw, Christopher Sanchez. That's kind of what you're interested in backing with him at times. 60.6%. Uh, that is way up there in... Uh, I mean, it's basically Framber Valdez territory north of 60%. He throws that sinker 48% of the time, then has a changeup moving off of it. Throws a slider occasionally, but uh, it's not my favorite pitch by any means. Uh, looking at it, 26.4% whip percentage looks great. But then a 308 expected batting average against, and he primarily only throws it to righties, and righties have a field day with it. So uh, hopefully he can cut that crap out, and that's something that uh, keeps me away from wanting to go crazy backing Philly, even at minus 166, which I feel like is a short number. But they've been better against right-handed pitching than lefties. So Sanchez, I think he's set up to succeed and do all right here. But Randy Vasquez sure is not. Look at the weather. It is so hot. It might be one of those rapper Different, different segment. But anyway, wind's blowing out here. Yeah, we're going to get some heat nearly like 85 degrees, 90 degrees at first pitch. And we're going to get some wind blowing out. And I got to say, it's not a whole lot better for a lefty than to be facing Randy Vasquez in a spot like this. The guy is a walking pinata. So Randy Vasquez, 
uh, what, 15.4% K rate, 429 X Wobicon, only a 38.1% hard hit, but you add in all of these elements, the four-seamer changeup. Now, he'd be wise to throw changeups only to Kyle Schwarber, who that's the only pitch he kind of struggles against, but everything else, Kyle Schwarber is out of control, and he's breaking my home run model here considering the weather, well, the perspective weather. We'll take a look at it here closer to first pitch, but I got a feeling we might be seeing home run numbers inside of plus 200. I don't think I've ever in my entire life, the three years have done that. I think like a 12 to one type two home run play on Kyle Schwarber is actually in play here. We're talking as good of elements as it gets. We're talking about a bullpen that had to do a little bit more than expected. Obviously Dylan Cease did not have his best stuff. Uh, they just got bludgeoned. Uh, Dylan Cease got bludgeoned again, other than the Oakland spot where he was all right. Uh, it's been struggles of late for him. I'll take a look into his pitch mix a little bit further, but uh, Kyle Schwarber, I think he is uh, set to launch a couple of long balls. Pay very close attention to those numbers. Anything better than plus 210? We'll see if we actually get that against Vasquez in this heat. I doubt it, though. So I'm going to actually take a look at the two home run market. I've never done that in my life. Done this, though. I've locked things. I've locked things a lot. This will be our third go-around in the third consecutive Sunny Gray start. In the lock department, what a time to be alive. But everything just sets up here. This opened at minus 147. I was able to get in it right around the minus 154 number. It's at minus 156 currently. That's why the current odds are over there. And I would be betting this thing up to minus 170. And here's why. Sonny Gray going up against Braxton Garrett. Garrett is just a problem. And you know who's not? Sonny Gray. I went through all of his pitch mix coming off of that very, very strange Pittsburgh spot. And you know what? Nothing really stood out to me. I think he is just freaking fine. Again, he just mowed down Pittsburgh. Nine strikeouts in that spot. Gave up the one earned, but got the W. Got that lock across the board for us. And against the Rockies at home, that was the struggle bus spot. Four and two thirds, five strikeouts, but three earned. Got the L on that one. And yeah, got the L against the Phillies. I, I don't really know what to make of Sonny Gray other than he is awesome at pitching still. So you want to look at small samples or individual games, you could probably pick apart a lot of pitchers. But with him, 3.12 expected ERA, it's perfectly in line with his 3.02 ERA. 33% strikeout rate going up against Miami in a great pitcher's ballpark. Thought about backing him first five, but those numbers are actually a little bit inflated. So I'm willing to what roll the dice it doesn't even feel like rolling the dice against mr braxton garrett here uh and just go for the entire ball game and and bring the bullpens into this one braxton garrett sitting there with a 49 percent hard hit 440 expected slugging and despite the fact that well the cardinals were in a phenomenal spot to hit bombs with the wind blowing out in wrigley on sunday i think they'll be just fine even in a pitcher's ballpark here considering this is a much better matchup than taking on jameson tyon who's actually been all right this season so braxton garrett the southpaw Gonna have to deal with some righty power. Obviously, uh, Arenado's power has disappeared. Paul Goldschmidt's still there. He'll get some lefties in this lineup, which will help out a little bit. But at minus 154, minus 156 as it currently stands, fire this one up, friends. My favorite play of the day. I know a lot of you are just going to make it a parlay piece, and it is what it is. But again, I would be betting this up to minus 170. It's the best play on the board currently. Three straight for Sonny Gray. We're one and one. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing can go wrong. Here, friends, OS Premium Tools, Discord, Insider Access. If you want to win long-term, yes, if you want to win long-term, you want to follow winning players. We're talking winning betters. We're talking people over at Odd Shopper, all of the crew that you see here on the YouTube channel day in, day out. Myself, Ben Raza for Ben's Best Bet. Uh, Isaiah Sirios, I'm telling you, all of these guys are seriously good. <laughs> see what I did there? $14.95 weekly, $49.95 monthly. And if you use promo code Lindy, bang, Mike Breen style. He'll, hopefully we hear that a lot from Jason Tatum tomorrow. 20% uh, off, use code Lindy. Expert picks, Discord premium pools, jumping in for just $12 for your first week. Come in, the water's warm. That's less than $2 a day. Look at me doing fast math. Back to the picks we go. This is on the fringe for me. It is so very much on the fringe. We've talked about some of the improvements for Yusai Kikuchi, uh, but from time to time, he'll kill you. So it is what it is. But Nick Pavetta, he's like the the perfect example of of hot cold pipes like mick pavetta is unbelievable with the strikeout stuff 29.6 percent here on the season love the ensemble and actually getting a little unlucky 3.61 expected era 3.88 actual era but we know from time to time the long ball can pop up but you know what one two three 
only two home runs in his last five starts. That's useful stuff to be seeing from Nick Pavetta, and we're getting them at plus 108. I think Toronto might still take money here, and that's kind of got me hitting the brakes. Now, again, the lean like, that's always kind of this gray area where, hey, rather than just put a lean, I want to let you know this is on the outside looking in. If this gets north of plus 110, I'm going to bet Boston. I, I just am. It's going to be a half unit play for me if I were to get into the plus 120, plus 125 range, which is pretty much impossible here for range of outcome purposes. They won't they won't let you like get full subs in there. It'd be very strange. But I love backing Nick Pavetta here against Yusai Kikuchi. Again, give me coin flips like this where Kikuchi, 43.2% hard hit, 14.3 degree launch angle. Again, 23.6% K rate. Pretty decent stuff across the board for Kikuchi outside of the hard contact he gives up. And there's just enough righty power starting to show up here in this lineup. Uh, looking at one guy in particular. Hi, Jamie Westbrook. How are you this fine day? Very nice to see you. They like having that guy up there. Boston, lean like, wait for it to move. If it does, fire it up. Don't fire this up at all. We got Reese Olsen. We got Max Freed. And uh, kind of one of those spots where the weather, talked about it before, starting to get a little bit warmer down there in the southeast. Specifically Atlanta. Obviously no Ronald Acuna. We'll get to the Dodgers here after this. I mean, just a ton of bad breaks that they had over the weekend with Yamamoto. And then Mookie Betts today breaking his hand. Well, foreshadowing there but the wind is blowing in 10 miles per hour but it's sitting right around 89 yeah 89 at first pitch with humidity right around 50 percent and going up as this ball game progresses throughout the entire evening and that's got me freaked out because the thing that's popping right now under normal conditions we're talking like 75 in a bubble would be the under of eight but i don't really like it so i'm overriding my system and just not giving you a play that i don't believe in all that much max freed i think is phenomenal and you know there's a lot of strikeouts available. And I think Max Fried is a phenomenal pitcher that I normally would love to capitalize on the under of eight. But Olsen, he's ran into some hard times here. Yeah, he was getting a little unlucky in the wind department. Pointing it out to the person in the YouTube comments who's like, you're really mean to Reese Olsen. No, I'm not. Just don't think he's very good. But anyway, under eight, just a lean, dear Lord. <sighs> it's a dicey spot. Don't even have to override this one. Nothing looks good. David Peterson, John Gray. So we're going to kind of move along pretty quickly and save you some time. John Gray, he had some strikeout stuff once upon a time. That once upon a time has gone away. Uh, we're talking 24.3% K rate is still good. Don't get me wrong. But against these Mets, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of strikeouts available here. And uh, yeah, cool. I've got Emac trolling me about Wrigley Wind. I'm very aware, Emac, that that game didn't put up runs. I didn't bet the over. I just played a lot of DFS on the over, but whatever. Stop it. It's twice. I hate the Slack message thing. Anybody else have like a work Slack that just inopportune times? It's fine. I didn't have a whole lot to say about this game. Uh, what do we have? Mets money line. That's the best available right now. Lean. I'm not betting the Mets at even money against anybody with Peterson on the mound. Are you kidding me? Sure, congratulations. They just hit up Dylan season. It was good stuff. Good, good, good stuff, guys. This is really good stuff. BetMGM first bet safety net up to $1,500. If you go to the link below, you deposit $25, $50, $100, and you play for your first bet. $25, $50, $100, $500, up to $1,500 on that first bet. We'll come back to you in bonus bets if your first bet loses. That is an awesome opportunity to take a big swing on anything I recommend here, but more than likely, just to increase your expected value, take a big dog on the card, be it in WNBA, be it in the Euro soccer, which I guarantee you Ben Raza is going to have hot fire this week. So jump into that Discord, friends, down below. But specifically here with Bet GM, you want to take a big shot on a big dog because, well, it comes back to you no matter what. So when you take those bigger shots, you have a massive potential payout coming your way. So first bet safety net up to $1,500 at the link below with our friends at BetMGM. Only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. San Francisco and the Cubbies. And wouldn't you know it, wind's blowing out in Wrigley again. So yes, Emac, thank you. It's my friend and colleague over at Stochastic. If you guys aren't watching us for fantasy content, well, I'm just saying something to check out down below as well. A Stochastic YouTube channel, uh, S-T-O-K-A-S-T-I-C. -S Look at that, I can spell. Uh, Jordan Hicks, he has been sick. He's had a rumbly in his tumbly. He's still in line to get the ball here in this spot. 
Now, I like this bet no matter what, but you got to know the rules of your sports book because I would prefer to have a starter that has to go four or five potentially here in a Hicks rather than get a bullpen approach, especially a team like San Francisco that has, you know, Rodgers and a couple of other arms in the bullpen where they can kind of play the platoon whenever they want in certain spots. Now, Javier Assad, he's been pretty good, but I repeat, Wind and Wrigley is definitely something that well, with this current baseball that we have that's not flying as far, I mean, we would see a 10 and a half total here really quick, but 37.4% hard hit is actually decent. Only an 18.7% whiff percentage, which is not decent, but a 23.1% K rate that is decent. I goes back and forth both ways here. Not that San Francisco is some elite offense getting up there to the plate either in this spot, but they at least have enough power that this makes me think targeting solo home runs, targeting some of these other spots. Now, it's not like the books don't know that the wind is blowing out, but based on what we saw Sunday, maybe they try to lure it back in here. I'm not sure what to make of those prop numbers yet, so we're going to sit, wait, and wish that we can get a couple of those in play. But let's just hope that Hicks is your starter here because nine and a half mm, wouldn't look as good with a bullpen situation. Maybe they get somebody from AAA to come in. If you have questions about this one, hit me up on X at Eric Lindquist. But as it stands right now, I know a book, well, FanDuel, where you could bet this and you're definitely going to have it play no matter what. So over nine and a half, fire it up here. I think there are runs in Wrigley coming off of Sunday's, uh, I'll, I'll call it a dud, flat out dud. 2-1 ball game, sickly called that and I didn't bet it. The Dodgers just got bit by the injury bug over the weekend, fractured hand for Mookie Betts. So we're going to see a different lineup configuration coming out for them and yet... We have an 11 and a half total here at open. You know why? Because it is Coors Field. Welcome to Colorado for the Dodgers. Uh, the weather forecast, friends, it is 95 degrees at first pitch with the wind blowing out. I don't know what to tell you. It's like the best possible hitting environment and probably two of the best possible pitchers you could have on the mound. James Paxton coming off of an actual decent outing at home. I want to break down a little bit of home road splits for you here, shall we? James Paxton at home this season. 1.33 whip, 212 uh, batting average, 2.51 ERA. On the road in his seven starts, 1.48 whip. 261 in batting average and 5.23 ERA. He is below average in every advanced metrics, 13.8% K rate, 12.6% walk rate to go with it. That 352 X Woba, my God, he is breaking my model. And even Colorado, we know how poor of an offense they are uh, against righties here, a 94, or sorry, against lefties, Southpaw like James Paxton, a 94 WRC plus against, it's not so bad. 154 ISO, not so bad. And that adjusts, well, not the ISO, but the, the WRC Plus does, adjust for ballpark. So holy mother of God, are we looking at runs here, even on the Colorado side. And then Cal Quantrill, 17.2% carry, 257 expected batting average. Definitely a lineup decrease having Mookie Betts not in it, but they're going to have Andy Pages maybe move up. They're going to be able to play, what, Chris Taylor, Kevin Biggio in the platoon. There's going to be runs available. I'm just leaning towards the over of 11 and a half. You can't get a better hitting environment than this one that we are walking into. But the prices are going to be ridiculous on the props. Shohei Otani is going to be like plus 150 to hit a home run. That's going to be hilarious to see in the morning. In our last game of the night, Mr. Rodriguez taking on Mr. Jose Soriano. Uh, let's start over on the Soriano side of things. Talked about him quite in detail last time out. Uh, the splitter, looking at the, the the pitch mix that we have from him. Sorry, yeah, the split finger uh, that that is. Has a knuckle curve that he primarily throws the most. It's a really good pitch. 38.3% whip percentage, 197 batting average against 167 expected batting average. And that's the only reason that this Milwaukee minus one and a half spot it's just not getting the trigger pulled on it. Now, I'm more likely to pull the trigger here, I think, than even the Pittsburgh one, which is strange because Paul Skeen's much, much better uh, pitcher overall. But I think what the problem is, is that Soriano just isn't getting, I mean, if he's going to be, it's, it's looking like he's still going to throw the sinker a lot to some of these righties. And well, the knuckle curve he's primarily using up against lefties and I don't know. I still look at the righties as guys that you want to be targeting up against him here. And I ended up breaking down a lot about Jose Siriano. In fact, 25.2% K rate there against righties. Yay. But a 166 expected ISO against. And you know who has a 233 expected ISO against? 
right-handed pitching is Willie Adamas. So uh, we're going to actually be backing at that side of things here. Milwaukee minus one and a half, more inclined to be pulling the trigger on them rather than that Pittsburgh run line. And then Willie Adamas wanted to throw in another home run for the people. Uh, trust me, between Wrigley Field and between the Kyle Schwarber spot, between this one, we have a lot of great hitting environments. Probably the best Monday of hitting environments we've had all season long. Can't wait for a lot of 2-1 ball games. That'll be enjoyable. But I'm going to have a lot of prop exposure on this card. So ask me questions over on X or in the premium Discord. Can't wait to give you answers. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. It's Monday, baby. Head to the comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board for a great slate that we have in store for us. Hopefully, finally, we'll see a ton of runs on a Monday. It feels like it's been a while. It feels like it's been a while. Might be recency bias. But producer Jacob, good luck to your Celtics. Good luck to your Celtics. I'll be cheering for them. Not sure if I'm going to bet them yet or not. They're in the lean category. On the NBA video, Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Check that out for my favorite props couple of other plays that I'm paying attention to. So check it out down at the link below. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Monday.